So Framer just dropped a brand new feature this week, announcing design pages, which is gonna allow you to skip Figma entirely and let you ideate, develop and publish your site on the internet without any other design tools. In this video, we'll explore how design pages work, how to use them and what this means for the future of web design. Let's go. So when you open your next Framer project, you'll notice on the left hand properties panel here, we actually have a new section for design pages. Now, when we kind of think about the flow of actually designing a website, you're probably still starting in Figma. I'm still the same. There are some crazy designers out there that were before this update designing everything in Framer and it's fine, but I don't think the workflow is necessarily optimized for it. Cause if you think about what you actually use Figma for, a lot of that is ideation. Like you might take one section of a website and you might actually duplicate it multiple times to play with different versions of that page. And then you would choose what design works best and then you would kind of merge that into your existing design. Well, I think with the release of design pages, we're actually gonna see a lot more designers actually starting in Framer, which is really exciting. It's actually gonna save designers a lot of time in the long run because you don't have to transfer things over because everything's all in one place. So let's go ahead here and create a new design page and we'll just call this our ideas. Now you can have pages for whatever you want. You could have pages for your ideation, your st style and brand guide, your logos, your icon set, everything in between. I think there's going to be a lot of different use cases that come from design pages. Now, the first thing to note with design pages is it's just like anything else in Framer. It's a free form canvas. I can draw a frame or a rectangle or whatever I want on the canvas. And I can basically draw as many of these as I like. Now, the difference between a design page and an actual page is this won't actually appear on your published site. This just lives in Framer. No one's going to be able to see this, which means you can be as messy as you want to be and no one's going to see it. Now, if you're a bit of a Framer nerd like me, you know that Framer actually already kind of had this feature hidden in, but this update's got a quality of life improvement to that feature. Now it was actually called Canvas Pages beforehand and like it worked pretty much like this. There was a few extra things that were kind of missing, uh, but essentially the design pages is the next iteration of that, which is really exciting because they've actually made it far more intuitive with the actual Framer web page builder. So for example, right, let's say I have a section of my website here. Let's actually give it a background color. And let's say I want to iterate on this design. Well, instead of just like iterating directly on this one page here, what I can do is literally just like duplicate that by holding uh, Alt Shift and then moving it across. And then we might actually call this version two. And then I can make edits directly to this. So, you know, maybe I want to put this on the left-hand side and let's actually align this image to say the right. And I can start to play around with different layouts, variations of my design here on the canvas. So for example, I could actually build my entire page here in the design page. And then when I'm ready to actually convert that to a page on my actual site, I can right click and go create web page. And you will notice it's now gonna create a new page from that frame. And then all I'd have to do is go through, set my links, add my breakpoints, make it responsive, basically do all the things you would do before you hit publish. But again, because we actually designed this page on this freeform canvas with design pages, it's actually really intuitive to be able to pull across to a page in Framer and then take it from there. So because it is a design page and not an actual page, there's some things that are hidden. So firstly, it's the publish button at the top right. That doesn't exist on these pages. You can't publish it. You can't set links. So that's something you have to do when you actually take it to uh, pages. And you also can't design for responsiveness. So AKA breakpoints. So there's little things like that, but to be completely honest, they're not needed in design pages because it doesn't make sense in terms of the flow. I think the real value of design pages here is being able to literally ideate in Framer from the get-go. Like you could even design your logo inside of Framer now, which is pretty cool because Framer obviously have their vectors, which is a relatively new release as well, which means I can basically build vector icons however I want and use them wherever I want. Now, the other cool thing about design pages is actually the updates to Wireframer. So when I actually go to the insert menu and click on Wireframer, which is Framer's sort of like AI website builder, Usually what happens beforehand is you could only alter one page. Now you can actually generate multiple pages on the same canvas. So for example, if I generate a landing page here, we'll just let it do its thing. And you will notice it's starting to generate here. 
So this looks pretty good. I can make iterations to this, but let's say I want to create a new page. I could just ask it, hey, Framer, create a new page for my About Us page. And now you'll notice it's actually starting to generate a new page for that about us. So this is really cool. Even just for coming up with ideas and playing with ideation, there's a lot of sort of unlock with this actual new workflow. And again, I think the switch that we're going to see is we're going to see designers starting to design in Framer much earlier. Now, what are Framer actually trying to do here? Well, I think they're actually trying to own the full creative process from ideation to publish. And to be honest, it makes a lot of sense because with the release of design pages, you don't actually need Figma anymore. And it's one step closer to actually eliminating that tool completely. So it's actually this really interesting space at the moment for designers and marketers who use Framer because you go, okay, are they going after Webflow? Are they going after Figma? It almost feels like they're going after Figma, which is obviously a really interesting play. Figma just IPO'd. They're a public company now. And now obviously Framer see that as an opportunity. Framer just also announced a new round for $100 million at a $2 billion valuation. So they are growing like crazy. And it's going to be really interesting to see how their ecosystem evolves over the next 12 months or so to really compete with tools like Figma. And then even today, Webflow just announced a bunch of new features and they released things like the component canvas and code components, which to be honest, is a bit of a rip off of Framer. So it's really interesting to see how Framer is positioned and now how the market is kind of following them rather than the other way around. Similar to Figma publishing Figma sites this year, letting you to actually publish your Figma sites to the internet. That was an interesting sort of launch. There hasn't been a huge amount of noise on it. And it still sounds like Framer is the tool that designers love. But, you know, of course, I am absolutely biased. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But I'm really excited about design pages and what this means for the workflow for web designers. And in the actual launch video, there was a little bit of an FU to Figma, which was kind of funny, uh, but essentially design pages are free. You can create unlimited amount of pages here. It's not going to cost you a dollar. And I think that's really exciting too, because it kind of reduces this barrier to entry for designers as well, which is how I think these tools should be. They should just let you create on the internet for free where possible, because at the end of the day, we just need more people creating cool stuff online. Now, I'd love to know what you think of design pages and how you're going to use them. So feel free to let me know down below. And if you enjoyed this video and you want more Framer content like this, consider subscribing to the channel because we're putting out new Framer videos every single week. And if you are interested in mastering Framer, like truly mastering it, feel free to check out my A to Z course on Framer, where we literally built an online school to let you master the tool. So if you are interested in that, I'll leave all the details down below. But until next time, I'll catch you later.